My vision was simple. That within our lifetime, we could do simple things that could emancipate our lot from this seemingly endless jail of poverty. To fully understand and learn from the story of Dr. Peter Munga, a banking magnate, it is important to know the history of banks and how they came into existence. It is believed that as long as civilization occurred, banking had existed with systems that were banking-like. Though it is hard to exactly point out when bank systems started, it is approximated to be around 8,000 BC when it was more of keeping trade records and it is hard to tell if there are institutions specifically developed for banking. The first proper banks developed in Mesopotamia with temples in Babylon that did lending activities. A lot of it was not financial, but rather lending of seeds to farmers who would later pay back through their harvests. There is also a record of credits during this time. At the temple of Artemis, there was a deposit of cash and has the presence of debts recorded. Banks really started to come into existence during the medieval time. However, most of them were still merchant banks. But this time, it was about crop loan and financing expeditions across the silk routes. Some of the earliest forms of brokers took place in these banks, with the idea of bankruptcy coming to existence when a trader failed to deliver the promised routes and they'll be declared bancarota, an Italian word for bankrupt. Modern banks started to exist around the 17th to 19th century where people will deposit their goods at vaults in Goldsmith of London and they will be charged service fees. The first bank to offer banknotes was the Bank of London where clients will be given notes as proof for the deposit of cash they made. Over time, the bank started to offer checks overdrafts, and traditional banking services. International financing in the 19th century took hold due to the Rothschilds. They got started by loaning money to the Bank of England and purchasing stocks. Over time, the Rothschild family started to invest in multiple projects around the world and financing military efforts. They were also taking in deposits from people and creating new banks. It was in the 20th century when banks that we know today started popping up and when they started to lend money to a country as a whole and retail banking started becoming a real thing. A lot of technology that was developed in the 20th century, such as the ATM and swift payments, are still in use today. With an understanding of the history of the bank as an institution, why it existed and how it was formalized. I can now share with you the story of Dr. Peter Munga, a Kenyan businessman who built one of the most innovative financial institutions in the continent. Dr. 
Peter Munga left his village to go and help his small scale trader father with business in Nairobi. But things changed after his father was committed to jail in 1952 by the colonial government that had declared a state of emergency when the young Munga was still in primary school. This forced him to join his mother in a small business so as to provide for the family. Through such experience, the young Munga got a unique insight into poverty and its effect. It gave him familiarity with the manner in which his mother and other women struggled to generate income to support themselves. The small-scale farmers were given checks and converting them to cash was a nightmare since most of them were unbanked. It took him four years to implement the opportunity he discovered. With Kenyan shillings 5,000 at that time, all he needed was a license to open a facility in the rural area and it worked perfectly. He founded Equity Building Society in his hometown of Kankema in 1984 before it became Equity Bank in August 2014. Munga recalls that he mobilized people to own part of his dream when he started Equity Building Society. One of Equity's mission is to help low-income earners to have access to bank services. This helped his customers to access services and could also deposit checks and withdraw at their convenience. Equity Bank is now Kenya's largest lender by customers. It has also become home to 14.2 billion bank accounts, which are over 50% of all bank accounts in Kenya and has an asset base of Kenyan shillings, 673.6 billion. It is the second largest bank in Kenya in terms of market capitalization and has extended its presence to Uganda, South Sudan, Rwanda, Tanzania, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Equity Bank has been listed at the Nairobi Securities Exchange as well as Uganda and Rwanda Stock Exchanges. Dr. Munga led Equity Bank to many milestones. In 2007, Equity Bank won the Global Vision Award, cited as the concept of the future that will shape the world economy. In 2008, it was named the African Business of the Year by African Business Council. In 2012, Equity was recognized by Ernst & Young as the World Business Enterprise of the Year. The banker top 1,000 world banks ranked Equity Bank position 11 globally on return on assets. Position 45 on profits on capital and position 37 on soundness of capital assets ratio. In 2018, the bank was recognized by the Banker Awards as the best commercial bank in Kenya and East Africa, the bank with the best digital offering in East Africa, and the most innovative bank in Kenya. With his leadership and wisdom which led 
to Equity becoming one of the strongest financial service providers in the region. Dr. Munga retired in 2018 after his 35 years of service. With his chairman position being replaced by Mr. David Ansel. On his retirement, Dr. Munga was offered Kenyan shillings 54 million as a thank you gift for his commitment and dedication to the company. Dr. Peter Munga holds education very dear to his heart and he is committed educationist as shown through his pioneer group of schools and pioneer international university with challenges that he himself faced in accessing education mr munga established wings to fly scholarship an initiative of equity group and mastercard foundation that aims to support secondary education for top performing children from financially challenged backgrounds the scholarship supports the scholars through the provision of tuition fees, accommodation, books, uniform, shopping, pocket money, and transport to and from school during the four years of secondary education. The foundation has so far supported 26,000 304 scholars and now let's take a look at Dr. Munga's five rules for success rules that aspiring entrepreneurs can learn from be bold enough to take the path less trodden when pursuing your goals Learn to overcome adversity and don't let it define you. Believe in yourself and take the risk. Opportunities will not come knocking at your door. Create them yourself. Finally, Dr. Munga attributed his success to the passion he sets in anything he does together with hard work and persistence.